All right, I hope you guys are doing well. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can improve your accuracy and enhance your chat flows using advanced RAG techniques. Now, when you're developing your RAG pipelines, there's always a number of things that you can do that's going to allow you to improve your LLM responses. And so when it comes to the RAG pipeline, uh, there's a couple of different phases that we can focus on uh, that's basically going to allow us to do that. And so, of course, the first is the documents, right? Uh, focusing on things like obviously making sure that we have uh, the best information possible. But after that, uh, we can actually focus on using things like text splitters to make sure that we're actually breaking the documents up into the right segments so that our, our LLMs can actually use that later on. Uh, the next step in the pipeline, obviously, is our vector stores, either optimizing the vector store using uh, metadata or adding other uh, types of information that can actually help us. And then uh, after that comes retrieval. All right, and there's a number of different methods that we're going to talk about that can actually allow us to improve the retrieval process uh, to make sure that those documents our LMs are using are the best possible. And then, of course, the last is the LM response. And when it comes to this area, there's different things we can work on, such as uh, using the right prompts or improving our prompts, uh, expanding the context window, uh, adding memory, and doing things like fine tuning. So, as you can see, there's a number of different things that we can do, but uh, for this video, we're going to focus specifically on retrieval, all right? This is where we can really uh, use a lot of different techniques and sometimes overlook techniques to basically improve the, the documents that we get returned from our, our vector store uh, and then provide to the LLM. And so when it comes to retrieval, for this video, we're going to focus on ranking methods and filters. Now, ranking methods are basically a technique where the LLM is going to essentially, you know, when it retrieves the documents, it's going to look at the documents that are first, second, and third, for example, and it's going to focus on those first. And then the later the document is, the further the document is in the stack, it's going to use that the least. So when you're really focusing on uh, providing the best possible LLM response you can, one of the first things that you can do is something called ranking or re-ranking. Uh, because what normally will happen is, is that when your query gets taken and applied to the vector database, it's going to just pull a list of documents that are not necessarily going to be ranked in order of like relevance. And so what re-ranking does is it basically uh, takes a look at each of the documents that have been returned, and then it essentially gives you a relevance score, uh, and it sorts the documents according to those relevance scores. So in this example, we asked the question, tell me more about Sony headphones. And then our LM basically pull the documents from our vector store in this particular order, right? And so what re-ranking does then is it will take a look at each of these documents. They will calculate a relevant score, and then it will come up with best possible listing, uh, the best possible uh, sorting or ranking to provide to our LM. And so in this case, because we're asking about the Sony headphones, this particular document, which was third, gets moved up in the list. And then when our LM is crafting its response, developing its response, it's going to use this document first. So ranking methods are extremely important. They're extremely powerful. And there's a number of different ways we can actually do that. Filtering methods are related to ranking methods in that we're basically trying to bring the best information up first, right? We're trying to focus on that first. And with filtering, what we do is we actually also calculate a relevance score, right, based on our question, uh, based on the question and the documents. And then what we do is we basically just filter out any documents that don't meet a certain uh, similarity threshold, right? So in this particular case, with the same question, uh, let's say that we ranked the first document uh, as a 0.9 and the rest as a 0.55 and 0.54. Uh, if we actually had a, a similarity threshold of greater than 0 0.08 or 0 0.8, then these documents, the, the bottom two documents, would basically get filtered out. And the only thing that would go to our LLM response is the first document. Right? So these are two really powerful methods that you can use to essentially provide your LLM uh, the best possible information that you can uh, according to the question. Now, all of the files that we talk about today are going to be a part of an ongoing advanced RAG workshop. So if you're interested in getting the files and downloading them, uh, you can check out the link below and get all the details there. Okay, so when it comes to ranking and filtering methods in Flowwise, there's quite a few techniques that we can use. And one of the first is the Cohere ReRank Retriever. Now, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, you really just need an API key, and you connect it to your vector store, 
And what it'll do is it'll automatically rank all of the, the documents uh, that are returned from the vector store, uh, and then it will provide them to the LLM. Uh, and we'll show you some examples in a second. The second one is the Reciprocal Rank Fusion Retriever. And I believe this is a Langchain uh, Retriever. And, and so what it does is it does pretty much the same thing as Cohere. Uh, it's designed to actually take a number of different sources and then rank them or re-rank them and then provide uh, the, uh, the documents, the sorted documents to the LLM. Uh, the only thing I don't necessarily like about the Reciprocal Rank Fusion Retriever is that sometimes it's designed to all of the sources and take out you know, documents that are too similar to each other. So uh, you don't always have full control over how it's, it's filtering out certain types of documents. The third retriever is the embeddings filter retriever. And what this does is it basically just uh, calculates a similarity threshold for each of your documents. And then if there's a document or you know, documents that don't actually uh, match or you know, go over the threshold, it'll just filter those out. Uh, and so this is great, but again, if you don't have, uh, or you don't think that you're going to have a lot of documents for a response, it may not always be the best. The next one is the LM filter retriever. And this is interesting because it basically uses uh, just a language model. It's almost like, you know, using an LM call to basically decide which, uh, documents should be passed to your, uh, your final LLM. Uh, and so with this, uh, you again, just, you know, uh, hook it up to your vector store retriever and then connect it to a language model. Uh, but beyond that, you don't really have a lot of control over your, uh, your, uh, your documents. And the last one is, I think, one of the most interesting, and it's the multi-query retrieval, uh, or the multi-query retriever. And what it does is it actually takes your question, your query, and then it will actually generate three or four, however many questions uh, that are related, and use those uh, responses, the documents that are returned from that, to actually answer the question. And so let's take a look at a few examples here. And for this, for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to use the NVIDIA Annual Corporation Annual Review, right? And this is actually a great document because it has a lot of really high quality information about NVIDIA and their projects or their products and their, you know, their performance, their financials yeah, on the state of AI in retail and consumer goods. And so, like I said, it has a lot of great uh, quality information that we can actually you know, really work on in terms of ranking and, and, and doing different rag techniques. So let's take a look at the first retrieval method, and that's the Cohere re-rank. And so, like I said, uh, you basically just hook it up to your vector store. In this case, we're using Chroma. And if we take a look at the messages that we've asked it, we're going to go a little to the top here. And so the first question we had was based on NVIDIA's performance in 2024. What are 10 predictions about uh, what they will do and how they will perform in 2025. And so it gives us the answer. And sometimes let's check the actual documents. Sometimes what it'll do is it will actually show us the relevancy score, but it did not do that. All right. So in this case, the only thing that's happening is that uh, the Cohere uh, rank a retriever, a uh, re rank retriever, is basically just sorting the documents automatically. Uh, and so then providing it to our LLM. Uh, and so, as with anything, you always want to test uh, the different responses and uh, and see how well it performs. Uh, but this actually does a very very good job of uh, really you know ranking the text uh, and does it very quickly too. And so, what we want to do though is we actually want to see uh, the the ranking process. Okay. So in order to do that, because it's not doing it necessarily for this particular case, it's not returning uh, the relevancy scores. We actually want to uh, see that. Um, and see how it works. So what we're doing is we're taking uh, the output from the re-rank retriever, the Cohere re-rank retriever, and we're basically just uh, you know taking that to a custom JS function and just displaying the results there. So if we go ahead and uh, look at the output here. If we go up and we say what contributed to NVIDIA's performance in 2024, this is not going to give us an LN response. It's just going to give us the returned documents from the Cohere uh, re-rank retriever. So as you can see here. Uh, these are the uh, the return documents and then at the bottom here you can see the relevant score right and here the first document is the score is nine point uh, nine eight eight and then if we scroll down we can see that the next one is point nine eight four 
And then the next one is, let's see, the next one is 0.8556. So you can see that it's actually ranking each of the documents uh, in order of importance, all right? And so working with your pipelines, you definitely want uh, to incorporate some kind of uh, ranking uh, solution or re-ranker uh, for your, your chat flows and your pipelines. All right, so, you know, Cohere is a great uh, model. It's super fast. Now, the only thing I don't really like about Cohere is that, you know, of course, when you're working with um, development and, you know, working with the trial, uh, the, um, the rate limit is about 10 per minute, and then the production rate is about 1,000 per minute. And while that's not bad, um, for me, you know, when you're talking about, you know, really scaling and, and, and working on, like, projects in production, it's, it's a little low. I feel like it's a little low. Um, and so we're going to talk about that in some ways that we can actually uh, enhance that. <laughs> uh, but again, yeah, you know, 1,000 per minute. Uh, will any one application ever go after, go over a thousand, you know, requests per minute, you know, because it always depends on the application that you're using. Uh, so again, uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so the, the next retriever is the reciprocal rank fusion retriever. And like I said, this is just like the Cohere model where it plugs directly into your vector store. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the, um, the questions and answers here. And so uh, the question we have here is based, besides revenue, what were five factors that positively affected NVIDIA's performance in 2024? And then if we take a look at the, if we take a look at the, um, the documents, the source documents, we can see the first one is a 0 0.01639. And then the second one is a 0 0.01612. So it's basically re-ranking the documents. Uh, but like I said, when it comes to the um, the reciprocal rank fusion retriever, oftentimes it will actually uh, strip documents from the original source. So here we have the additional parameters, and you can see that we're returning 20. Uh, and then in the additional parameters for this retriever, we're returning uh, top K of 20. So for some reason, it removed documents from the, the final source based on the uh, the relevancy scores. So if we go ahead and we ask another question and we say something like what contributed to NVIDIA's revenue in 2024. And as you can see, uh, we basically get the same, it looks like we get the same results here. So there's a difference here. So it seems like it's, it seems like it's changing some things and other things it's not changing. And then if we look at the answer, if we look at the answer, it's actually not that bad. The answer itself is not that bad, but you just have to look at how it's returning your documents because originally we wanted uh, 20 documents. And if we actually go ahead here, and I just wanna show you how this works here. If we disconnect this and we disconnect this, and we of course disconnect this, and then we go and we do just a direct no ranking at all, and then we ask the same question. So if we ask the same question, you can see that uh, it returned a number of different responses, all right? And of course, these are not ranked. And um, gaming revenue, so automotive, all right? And so the, uh, the, answers are, the answers are different. So you definitely want to test this out and see you know, what works best for you. But as you can see, the re-ranker essentially took out um, answers that it didn't feel were necessarily accurate or relevant. And so, you know, this is basically an algorithm. So you just kind of want to look at that and, uh, and see how well it works for your application. All right. So the next one is the embedding filter. And like I said, this is where it basically takes all of your documents and it calculates a similarity threshold. And if a document doesn't meet the threshold, it'll basically get filtered out. And so if we look at the responses for this one, we can see uh, based on the question, what is NVIDIA planning for the future when it comes to their data center technology? All right. And so it gives us the answer. And then uh, it gives us the, um, the, the documents that are returned. And so in this case, it doesn't give us a, a relevancy score. So we don't know what that one is. But if we look at the parameters here, we can see the top 20. These are the maximum. So if there are documents that are not, if we go back to our if we go back to our chroma and we look at the top 20, so it, it produced 20 um, or attempted to give us 20 documents. 
And then uh, if we look at this one, this is uh, 20 as well. Um, but apparently there were some documents that um, either were not generated or just did not meet the, the, the threshold. Uh, and so again, this is something that you probably want to test to see how well it works for you uh, based on your uh, your use case, all right? So the, the next one is the LLM filter. And like I said, this is basically using another LLM to evaluate your documents uh, based on your question. Uh, and it's a really, really interesting one and um, something that you should definitely test with a variety of different models that's going to affect your LLM response. So it's a cool idea. I like the idea, but uh, I think you would, to make this really valuable, you would actually kind of need to be able to adjust the individual prompt of the LLM uh, for this particular retriever. All right, so the last thing we're gonna cover is the multi-query retriever. Uh, and this is really, really interesting uh, because like I said, it, it takes your query, it takes your question, and then it generates its own questions to then retrieve the documents from. Uh, and so if you take a look at the, uh, the test that we ran here, uh, we asked it, uh, tell me more about NVIDIA EGX and how it could play a role in AI edge computing and how it could affect data centers, all right? And so this is the answer that it gave us. And if you kind of look at this one versus the other answers, you notice it's pretty, uh, it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, and so this is something that you also want to look at when it comes to not just the, the quality of your answers, but the formatting um, of your answers and how, how comprehensive they are. That can also enhance your accuracy. Uh, instead of having just a simple answer question, having like a uh, an answer that is you know has different layers to it that's much more comprehensive uh, that can also be very good you just have to make sure that your data is good your information is good as well uh, so as you can see this is not really uh, ranking although you could actually combine this with ranking which would be really really interesting uh, but if you actually look under the hood at what's happening again this is supposed to take your question your query and generate uh, three or four or however many additional queries that you want so in this particular case um, this is the question. And then if you look at our, our chain trace using Lunary, uh, you can see that these were the individual questions that it asked, right? So the first one was sort of close to our original question. Uh, what was the role of NVIDIA EGX in, a in edge AI computing as a potential impact on data center infrastructure? Well, the second question it generated was, can NVIDIA EGX enable more efficient AI processing at the edge? And how might this influence uh, data center design and operations? And then the third one was, how does NVIDIA EGX fit into the broader uh, landscape of edge computing and AI? And so it turns its own documents and then uses those documents to create your, uh, your final LM response. So it's a really, really powerful uh, technique. Now, again, the only caveat with this is that you should definitely make sure you have uh, as high quality information as possible. Uh, that is what's going to influence your results. So if you're using this and you don't have a lot of high quality information, what might happen is uh, the LM starts hallucinating, you know, because or using its own training data, right? Its own, you know, training models uh, to ex basically answer the question. Um, so this is something that you definitely want to make sure that you have, uh, like I said, a, a really, really high quality, uh, you know, PDFs and resources to start with. So these are five different ways that you can actually use to um, improve your accuracy with your with your LLMs and your pipelines, your RAG pipelines. Now, you know, these are all great. The best one uh, as far as just, you know, general application use is something like Cohere ReRanker. Uh, and again, the only issue with Cohere is the fact that, you know, it's in the middle of your pipeline, right? Your, your ranking uh, application, your ranking solution is a potential bottleneck. And if you're only relying on Cohere, uh, you know, that could be an issue depending on what you're using. Um, you know, the cohere rate limits are okay, but they're not the best. And we should definitely always find another alternative. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to roll our own re-ranker and, uh, and create a solution that we can use that's super flexible, uh, that's going to allow us to really enhance our, our pipelines uh, and, and essentially do what we need for our applications. So I'll see you in the next video.